Hello, this is your host Swapnil Bharatiya and welcome to TFIR. Today we are going to talk about Suze. As you all know, Suze is the oldest Linux company. The company was started just a few months after Linus Torvalds released the Linux kernel. Suze has evolved beyond just the Linux vendor and is expanding into other areas including cloud and edge computing. But operating system which is uh, SLE or Suze Linux Enterprise remains their core strength. But we all know that uh, the IT landscape is changing and more and more workloads are getting containerized. So what is SUSE's strategy for the operating system? How is the operating system itself is evolving? So today we are going to talk to one of my favorite technologists in SUSE or in the whole open source world, Matthias Ackerman. So Matthias, welcome to the show. And before we kind of deep dive into this interview, can you quickly introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Matthias Eckermann. I'm Director of Product Management uh, uh, for Linux uh, at SUSE. Uh, I'm over 18 years with the company and besides uh, doing that, the job as a, as a team lead, I'm, I'm also very interested in, in file systems and security. So that's my, my pet uh, interests, basically. Uh, so let's quickly start with, uh, with Slash or the operating system market. As we see that uh, the whole market is kind of moving towards modernized workload, which is mostly containers. Yeah. Suze has uh, Cubic and which is like community version of CASP platform. Yeah. And then of course you have SLES. So do you see uh, evolution of SLES in the, in, in, in the, in the direction where it's, it serves, it be, because more and more kind of containerized itself? So um, I think we have to differentiate the market. Mm -hmm. um, that's the first step. Um, it's it's not so much that um, that we that we see every everybody doing the same thing, but we see uh, customers from their use case perspective and also from their deployment perspective differentiating um, the the deployment scenarios. And this is why, from from SUSE's perspective, and even more from a partner and customer perspective, it makes sense that we allow our customers to uh, deploy the enterprise operating system platform that we are building to deploy in, in different methods. So um, this means that, yes, on the one side, we see customers who want to use more containers, containers based on an enterprise operating system, the containers themselves or the container host platform. That would be SUSE CAS platform. Um, on the other side, we also see that customers who are using a traditional operating system, how I would like to call uh, Susan's Enterprise Server, that they are um, wanting to try uh, containers. They want to, to try, have a first step into it without getting rid of their traditional methods. And then, so that's the middle ground. And then we see very traditional customers and we also see a trend there who go for even longer life cycles. So that's what I would call true mission critical or business critical applications and deployments. And, and those are the customers and partners who stick with the traditional uh, deployment method the longest. So my perspective is, yes, we see a trend towards more containerization, um, but I would differentiate not everybody is going there, um, but SUSE is well prepared with the what we call common code base of SUSE Linux Enterprise um, to build um, a traditional operating system, um, to make the traditional operating system be enabled for more containerization, and um, on the third, also to build other deployment methods out of this, like uh, a container as a service platform, so that's the host, but also, and we already started this, to build containers instead of traditional workload deployments out of the SUSE Linux Enterprise uh, platform. So an example is that on the container as a service platform that SUSE delivers today, we already have, I think, six containers which are built out of the same code as SUSE Linux Enterprise Server is, and there, for example, is a container with the MariaDB database, so the open source database. And this one is directly derived from the, from the code that is in Susan's Enterprise Server. So it's basically the same, the same source code. It's even the same binary that we just package as a package up as a container. 
Does that answer your question? Oh yeah, it does. Uh, now let's let's just bring that containers to the operating system itself. Uh, uh, I'm assuming that uh, Suze is working on the next version of Slash, you know, and you're skipping 13 and 14 for superstitious reason or whatever they are, and moving to 15. Uh, which may be released next year or whenever it's coming. Uh, so, so can you can you talk about the roadmap and how it's kind of changing or you know evolving, kind of borrowing the idea of you know the same modular or containerized or you know broken pieces kind of model? Yeah. So um, indeed, um, we have our roadmap and uh, it's it's public. Um, also, was announced last year SuzuCon that we are planning Susan News Enterprise fifteen mid next year. So that's the the rough target. And this follows a trend in the market that we see that every four years it is necessary for the code base to be refreshed. Just because the open source development is so quick, there are um, changes in the security uh, packages that we need to, um, to deploy and, and, and other things that make it necessary. Um, so from that perspective, mid next year it is. And Susan Linux Enterprise 15, as we call it, um, is the first um, operating system platform that we as SUSE deliver, which has, has the unique uh, functionality of being delivered as just one installer. And this is in the context of modularization that we have started with SUSE's Enterprise 12 already. So let me explain this a little bit. With SUSE's Enterprise 10 and 11, we had a rather monolithic operating system. This is what everybody does and did, and that was good up to a certain point in time. Then up at this point in time, we saw that more and more people um, uh, follow the agile approach on uh, development, so software development and software deployment. Agile de um, approach not only from the development and process perspective, but also it has influences and consequences for the tools that you're using, for the code base that you're using. It must refresh itself much quicker than uh, it did before. And so this means that also from the operating system perspective and from the development platform that we're offering perspective, uh, we have to give our customers and partners a valid um, set of tools and packages. And we also have to see how we can combine the requirement for the operating system to be very stable, long-term, mission critical on the one side, to also uh, give the agile part of the world, as I want, would like to say it, um, what they need to develop. And um, from my perspective, um, containerization is only the logical consequence of doing agile development. Because with agile development, you give back the power very uh, strongly to the developers. And now that you give it back to developers, the ops part of it, DevOps is that, right? They don't want to bother um, anymore about the deployment and the dependencies. So the packaging is given back to the developer and this is what we call contain containerization. So containerization, agile and DevOps together make perfect sense. And the operating system platform 12 was already a little bit prepared. In 15, we go a next step by um, doing more modularization, but also in the same time by doing more, we make it more easy for customers and partners to consume this. Because what we figured, it, that's not always easy to, to see where packages are, how they depend. And from a SUSE perspective, this is where we really invest to make in our update stack and our software stack this easy for customers to use. That's important. Um, because obviously people don't want to be bothered by the operating system and their tools, they would just want to use. In the same sense of doing things more easy, what we do is allowing customers to, all, to install all Susan Linux Enterprise products out of one installer. We call it Unified Installer. And this Unified Installer will just grab all the dependencies that it needs, either from the internet or a local installation source that you can as a customer or partner deploy and from this one it will install the required and requested product for you. So modularization on the one side and unified installer go hand in hand and the interesting thing now is that the code base, so I often say common code base, of this 
traditional Susan Linux enterprise also will be reused to build the software stack which then builds the next container as a service platform which um, we think will be called container as a service platform 3. So it will be come out around the same time as Susan Linux Enterprise 15 and it will be based on the very same binary packages uh, so that also hardware certifications and potentially also security certifications can be shared between those two product lines as much as this is possible from a perspective of these respective certifications. And in this way the modularization of 15 and the unified installer um, also have an, a consequence for us to be more capable of delivering a containerized platform because the containers that you then built from this common code base can either be deployed directly on Susanus Enterprise Server 15 where you will have a container engine or they can run on SUSE Container as a Service Platform where we also have a container engine which then is managed by, by Kubernetes. But I, I think that would go a little bit out of the scope of, of our discussion today. If I recall correctly, recently when Leap was announced, the whole chemistry between OpenSUSE, Leap, fa Tumbleweed Factory and you know how Slash was taking packages. So what will be the kind of you know, uh, relationship between Cubic, Casp, uh, Tumbleweed and Slash 15? Where will the code base be coming? How the... Yeah, so, so the interesting aspect is that we have a give and get between uh, multiple partners in this in this whole discussion. So we either, on the one side have the um, let's say upstream open source communities. So this is the hundreds of communities outside. And then we have what we call uh, OpenSUSE Tumbleweed where the OpenSUSE community takes the most recent code, uh, shapes it up to run on a SUSE platform to be built in the open build service that you are well aware of and, and then create a, let's say, a rolling distribution out of it. And then we have um, a factory, which is a little bit more a stable, uh, stable thing. And uh, with that, um, it is also a good preparation to be used as a, um, um, as, as a base for, for the next uh, SUSE Linux enterprise. Um, I think you, you might talk to the OpenSUSE guys. I, th I think Tumbleweed and Factory are, meanwhile, much closer together than I just described it. Um, now, SUSE comes in and, and SUSE, um, open, uh, SUSE Linux Enterprise comes in. What we do is that our developers who are, doing, who are working on SUSE Linux Enterprise 15 are not, only, are not directly contributing to an internal code base of 15, but they contribute to Factory and then, and they contributed already in the past, and on a specific point in time, um, there is a so-called um, uh, a cut from, from this code base or a freeze, and then this means um, that then we have a real 15 code base, and at a very near, close to point in time to that as well, uh, also the OpenSUSE people start building a leap 15 beta out of that. There is a little bit of time gap because um, there is a lot of work SUSE internally going on to, to qualify the platform, to, to harden it, and this is something that um, we don't want the, uh, the um, community to bother with, so we do that in, in part of SUSE Linux Enterprise. That's SUSE's contribution to the open source world, right? It's part of it. Open build service is there, but also our hardening of, of all this. And, and then the community can, can take this. However, you should not see that as a one way because we have taken a factory before, so there is also an influence from the community towards SUSE. It's not, it's not that only SUSE defines what's, what's going on there, but it's really back and forth. And the same is true for, for Cubic, um, which is the uh, open source version of what we call um, SUSE Container as a Service Platform as a product. Um, so Cubic is, basically we have done these 
Container is a service platform very quickly in SUSE internally, out of the code that everybody knew. And we have given back the recipe for how to do that uh, in the open build service also to the community. So that not only the way of how to build a distribution, a Linux distribution, uh, we have communicated and uh, documented for the community, but also the way how to build a SUSE micro OS and then on top of this a container as a service platform has been documented and given to the community so that everybody can see how we do that internally and, and what's the base for, for our product. The, the actual difference between, between these two is, is not so big. It's just that we have a, um, let's say, a special approval process internally, um, how, how we do that with the product because certifications and compliance depend on it, supportability by uh, the Microfocus Customer Care and SUSE Customer Care Organization depend on it. So this is what, how we do the product. But the recipes and the code base uh, and also the uh, philosophical background, how to build packages, how to build a distribution, which security measures to apply, all this is, is consistent across uh, those two families or, uh, yeah. I don't know if uh, it makes sense in this discussion or not, but uh, uh, cubic word or cast word versus slash word, you know, the app del delivery mechanism is also different. So, so do you s foresee that, you know, that containers will kind of become, you know, the kind of default apps instead of the traditional model? What are the benefits or what are the drawbacks that... So, um I think that there is a trend towards containerization, but what I see um, from a probably too much European perspective, I don't know, is that um, we have a uh, different um, approaches and also different speed towards containers in the world. So we have areas in Europe where I have been where 100, from 100 people, one or two had heard of or tried containers. Um, while I think in, in, in other parts of Europe and also the US, containerization is, is quite the other way around. You would, in 100 people, only have two people who have not touched it or even use it in production, right? So, so this is one thing. We have a worldwide different approach to containers. Um, as I said, containerization is very close to the development um, is to the agile development and the DevOps approach. Um, so for people who have a traditional software development, this probably does not perfectly fit. And there is one um, caveat that, uh, that I have. It's not, it's not that it is bad to have containers, but there is one caveat. The real challenge for containers is uh, the, the long-term maintenance of it. As long as you are developing your own software, as, you, as long as you have in-house developers who, who build these containers, all is fine. You have the machinery in-house in to deploy, to, to build, deploy, maintain, update, and so on. But once we are talking about sharing containers between different parties, and this is actually uh, where SUSE is in and what SUSE is, is already doing, then new measures are important. So one of these measures, for example, is security. Um, you need to have signed containers. Many containers out there in the world are not signed. So this is one of the things we really need to have. And the other thing is uh, also, again, in the security and maintenance area, that you need a lifecycle process and a lifecycle management for containers so that you really can make sure that whenever a container runs or is started, we have to say better, whenever a container is started, you really have the most recent version of the container, but not only of the specific software that you are looking at, but the whole stack which was used to build this container must be up to date with respect to stability and security measures. And this is the real challenge that I foresee. And this is why um, SUSE's approach of having a container as a service um, platform as the host operating system together or in combination with tools like SUSE Manager, uh, where you can monitor uh, or also uh, introspect the containers themselves, is a need and also for customers important um, to, to, have, to them have the same um, 
stability, the same security, and the same compliance in a containerized world that they're used to have in a classical or traditional operating system infrastructure? Uh, I think I got everything within the time frame that I had. Uh, is there anything else that you think? I think I covered the base. No, I, I think uh, I think you had some very very good questions uh, to to this topic. So so thanks for that. Thank you.